the LEGO Mindstorms EV3, a fan-favorite robotics kit and a very versatile LEGO set that allows you to build all kinds of moving contraptions. I've made a lot of videos with the Mindstorms over the years, and it's been really fun to learn to code it and to experiment with the limitations of it. A lot of my older Mindstorms videos still remain my most viewed, and it's great to see that the community is still really interested in Mindstorms EV3. And with the Mindstorms 5 coming out in 2021, I thought this would be a good time to look back on one of my earlier Mindstorms videos that had a lot of views online. It was just a short video about which batteries you needed for the Mindstorms, which if you don't know, are 6 AA batteries and 2 AAA batteries, about 1.5 to 1.2 volts. And these are the batteries that I use in my video. These are the same batteries that I've been using now for 5 years. They were always rechargeable and I think I've only had to buy one extra set. In this video, I wanted to talk about which batteries are now the best option, especially locally. It can be hard to find batteries that will work for this kind of Mindstorms robotics kit. So in this video, we're going to look at the batteries you actually need for Mindstorms EV3. The two main choices are standard alkaline batteries, or you can use rechargeable alkaline batteries. So I've done some research on the best battery types, and I'll present to you the choices for normal and rechargeable batteries. One other thing to note is that lithium batteries may be more efficient, but they're not recommended by LEGO. When looking at standard batteries, Energizer always had the best value and were the easiest to find. You can get 30 of these batteries for $25. This means you can get 5 uses out of that 30 battery pack. But for 10 uses, it'll be double that, and for 50 uses, it becomes very expensive at 10 boxes of batteries. Which means you'll be sending 300 batteries to landfill, which is definitely not a sustainable option. LEGO has made their own battery pack for the Mindstorms. It's very efficient, it plugs straight in, and all you need to do is plug it in with a charger. It seems like really good value, but it turns out it's actually quite expensive. Batteries are only really meant to be used for the education edition, and that's why it has the high price point. And battery chargers can be hard to find. The one that I've been using now, have been using for many years, but it's discontinued, and I'm not going to look at it in this video because of that. You can get a full battery charger from Energizer for $25. The batteries, however, are almost $20 as well. This means that there's a very high cost for just one use at $62. But the good thing is that no matter how many uses you have, it stays at $62. This can be good in the long run, and especially when we compare it next to normal batteries. The EV3 battery lasts about three and a half hours, and after 24 hours, the normal batteries are still $12 cheaper. But the EV3 is meant to be used over many days, and when you look at it like that, it's not even a comparison. After several days of use, the prices for the two are very different, and in the long run, it seems that rechargeable batteries are a much better solution and more healthy for the environment. Ultimately, there are a lot of things you need to consider, and how often you're going to use it and who's going to use it, the kit very much depends on which type you should get. Another thing to note is that the remote is very small and it doesn't lose battery very quickly. So any battery type is fine for this. So my final opinion is that rechargeables are the best idea. Maybe not Lego's own battery pack, which might be too expensive, but it's up to you entirely. And if you want the easiest one to use, Lego's own home brand one might be the best. And that's all I have to say for this video. Ultimately, the choice of what you do with the Mindstorms is up to you, and there's a lot of possibility. Over all my videos, it's been great to see how people have reacted to seeing the Mindstorms in action. It's always cool to see moving parts interact, and being able to code it yourself really adds to the interactivity of it. That original Batteries video used to be my most viewed, but it's now this stop motion which has over 10,000 views as of the time of making this video. I'd like to thank you all for supporting this channel, it's been really fun over the last few years, and I look forward to more Mindstorms videos like it. Thanks.